Uh, I saw I saw an alert come up. Now now specify exactly what what's going on here. Well, Is he following it, Trudeau's route with handguns? No. Not, well, not direct. See, what he's doing is he's doing what Beto O'Rourke did. He's standing on the graves of children, and he's using it to try and find an issue that will help Democrats in the midterm elections. That's exactly what he did. He pushed the same message. Literally, three days ago, I put out a video saying, do something is the wrong question. It is the wrong answer in dealing with mass shootings, school shootings and crime in general three days ago and today he said we have to do something your america is asking us to do something and this is what i want to do this is insanity it's the wrong question because it's not do something it's do something effective do something efficient do something that actually affects criminals not american citizens which is what they have been doing for five decades in a row and that's all we're hearing from them is they're going to say, well, we're going to take away your guns. We're going to take away your guns. We're going to make it hard for you to exercise your Second Amendment rights. That's the same thing they have been saying for five decades, whether it's the New York Safe Act, magazine bans, gun bans, whether it's red flag laws. The latest thing they just put out is H.R. 7910. I want people to look this up because it's called the Protecting Our Kids Act. That was by uh, Representative Jerry Nadler and, of course, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, the woman who put together H.R. 127, which is targeting blacks and women and making sure that they can't own a gun. And so this new bill, H.R. 7910, called Protecting Our Kids Act, is a wish list of stupid ideas that will never protect a single child in America. I didn't get a count of this, and I really want to see it, but I would swear to you that I believe that Joe Biden mentioned kids, that he's doing this about kids at least 20 times in his, I think it was a 20 minute speech. He's running on the dead bodies of children, just like Beto O'Rourke, making people get so angry, so upset because, oh my God, we have to do something to protect kids. Well, guess what? Not arming teachers doesn't protect our kids. Making sure that the buildings are secure, that is something that would help our kids. Saying that mom, the woman down the block, an 18-year-old woman, a 22-year-old woman, a mom who's 40, who has two kids, anyone to say that they can't protect themselves from some criminal because Joe Biden says you can't have a gun. Well, that's not helping them. That's not protecting them. Having, not having armed security uh, SROs armed security in our schools that's not protecting kids right. because we know for a fact as this showed us if you do not immediately take out the threat to the kids well guess what happens people die we've seen this and i've been covering mass shootings school shootings gun control for 15 years now okay yeah. and i can tell you very simply that we know for a fact the sooner that these individuals are engaged, the sooner that you will see that the event ends and more lives are saved. It is always the case. It is always what happens. Now, when you step away from that, and every time that we have seen police step away from that, we have seen more and more individuals harmed. It doesn't matter whether it's school, whether it's a gun-free zone, Orlando nightclub, whether it's a, a San Bernardino, or any of the schools, and there are many of them that we can mention. So it's always the same thing. So the question isn't uh, what we do know, which is that they could have taken this guy out. There are windows there. there. There's a lot of things. And it took one man walking in, what, 19 people standing out there, one man to walk in, confront the shooter, and the incident ended. But it's also a mentality. We have a mentality that's saying, let's do something, but not the effective thing. And that is something I want people to understand. It is the worst thing we could possibly say to any politician is do something. Well, they did something in Texas, in Uval. And what they did was the wrong thing. Right. And that's where we have to understand. It's not enough to say do something. We have to say do the effective thing, do the right thing. And that doesn't mean take away my rights. It means 
let's look at this and figure out a better plan. I just oh. gave you we had the subway shooter. We had this school shooting. We had Buffalo. We had uh, the medical doctor. Those are four different incidents. And guess what? They're all four different reasons why someone decided to kill innocent people. From what I understand, Upper New York is very pro Second Amendment. So why are they targeting lately all these Second Amendment areas during a gun control hunger and election season? I'm just one. There's so many things that I could keep going on that just don't add up. But go ahead. Before the, before the other guys go, let me mention. It's not that these are new stories. It's new coverage. There's a big difference. The news media, these things have, we get about 20 mass shootings a year. About 100 people die in mass shootings a year. Some years higher, some years lower. It's been consistent for 45 years. Right. So it's when the media attacks. Why is it getting attention? Because we're in the summer of the 22 uh, 2022 midterm elections and Democrats don't have an issue to stand on. And that's why we're hearing about it the way we're hearing about it, which is why the New York subway is a dead issue. And they're not talking about it. They're not talking about the mass shooting in Chicago that happened two weeks ago or what happened over this weekend. They're picking and choosing the story that pushes the agenda, which is about an election. It's not the government. It's a setup on emotions. Biden said there's no absolute in the Second Amendment. There is. Yeah. It plainly says. I mean, we got a lawyer on here, so he can answer this quicker than me. Infringe that it should not be infringed upon. Yeah. That's there's no way it should be touched. The fact there's that no it's in the Constitution be. makes it just so impervious to 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 restriction unless you can get an amendment to change that. That's how important it is. Where a law you can you could strike it down, modify it, amend it, just like they're trying to do now. This is constitutional. It takes yes. a lot to change the Constitution. I, just, I think I, one of the... Re I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just want to ask Joe a quick question, guys, because you have real-world experience. Have you ever noticed or seen... You're, uh, I'm a little older than you are. Uh, have you, in your lifetime, ever seen where the Democrats have said, okay, less guns in New York State, less guns we're going to restrict the types of guns and magazine sizes have you ever seen that actually equate to safer people no never uh, but i have seen that constantly you know the, the marching call less guns less guns restricted guns restricted magazines i remember during the dinkins administration they were trying to limit the capacity of the magazines are you out of your mind He's threatening to sue, uh, I believe it's the Washington Post and uh, the New York Times uh, for the Pulitzer Prize uh, winners, you know, if they don't revoke those awards, just because we all know why they won those was because of the fake, fake reporting on Russia that led us on these witch hunts for years and years, taxpayer money wasted. Constant fighting, dividing the country, lives ruined. I mean, I could go on and on on the destruction that it caused. But God bless Trump. And you know what? Trump has a hell of a case. If they do not rescind, if they do not take away those prizes, I mean, that's fraud. How, how are you going to give somebody a prize and actually keep it in place knowing after the fact that it was proven to be false? I mean, that, that's as phony as the phoniest can be. So that's, let's go, buddy. What's your thoughts? I look at this the same way that I look at the Amber Heard and uh, Johnny Depp trial. There need to be consequences. There needs to be some kind of reprisal. When we watch these agencies, these multi-million dollar agencies that demand that we trust them, that we believe them, that they are providing us the truth. And when we demonstrably show that they are not providing us the truth, that they are not giving us the honest answer, that they are avoiding, manipulating, or otherwise obfuscating the facts, then we must have some kind of recourse because that's why they were given the special powers that they have to be able to do things that the average American cannot, to go places, to ask questions that the average American can't. So just like when we see in a defamation case where someone has has impugned somebody, there has to be a consequence for that. Just like we have seen in so many cases where Nick Sandman, Kyle White Rittenhouse, we have seen they must be held accountable and our government must be 
held accountable and the people who watch the government, which is the news media, must be as accountable. Matter of fact, they should be punished more because their responsibility is that much higher. If, if this isn't racist, then I don't know what is. This is probably the most racist thing I've ever read. I don't agree with reparations. I think that's wrong. I think it's stupid. And there's, I've written about it before. And separate black problems. schools, too. Then what the hell was separate but equal all about? If Plus that's the case, Ferguson, why are we doing yeah. this? Why are we doing this again? We already know. That I don't care if it's segregation because you volunteer or it's segregation because you're being forced. It's segregation. We've gone through this. We've done this already. And now we're doing it again and we're going backwards in time to the 1950s, 1930s. I'm sorry. I don't care that they're liberals. I don't care they're progressive or what state they're in. This is insultingly bad. It is damaging to America. It is going to destroy generations going forward. And if anyone wants to say, well, Mike, you just don't understand. First of all, I'm black and Hispanic. Yeah, I think I kind of understand. Two, read the law. Read the Supreme Court case. Let's not go backwards in time and have to redo this. It's not going to be fun for anybody. 